Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we've got two problems dealing with electrostatics. Uh, in the first problem right here, I want to calculate the electrical potential at a point in space. Uh, in the second part here, I want to know how do you calculate the total electrical potential energy stored in this charge configuration? Uh, in the second problem, again, we have a different charge configuration. Again, how do you calculate electrical potential energy? And then what we do is we add another charge to it. And I'm going to release this charge from rest. Um, and I want to calculate when it gets far away from the three previous charges, uh, how fast is it going to move? So we're going to use a conservation of uh, energy in order to solve this problem. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja YouTube channel. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so we our first problem here, we have three charges at the vertices of this triangle. The first question says, calculate the electrical potential at point P down here. All right, and the second question is, what is the potential energy of the system? So two different quantities that we're asked to calculate. So for the first one, uh, how do you calculate the total potential V over at point P? So if there's three charges, remember, you need to know the magnitude of the charge and you need to know the distance to the point where I'm evaluating it. So for this uh, arrangement, I've given you that the top charge is positive and these blue charges are minus Q. Same magnitude, but different sign from the green one. And each charge here has a magnitude of 7.5 microcoulomb. So let's go ahead and just define some distances here. So I'm going to define this distance, which is going to be the same as the other one, but just to keep it neat here, we're going to call this B. And I'm going to call the distance here from the top charge to the point uh, P, I'm going to call that A. Because now you can see I have a right angle triangle. I can calculate these distances. Because right away, you should know that the value B must be equal to one centimeter. Okay, how would I find the value A, for example? Well, now you just use uh, Pythagorean, right? You would say that the hypotenuse, four squared, has to be equal to A squared plus B squared. And B, I know, is one. So that means that A would have to be the square root of four squared minus one squared, uh, which gives me square root of 15. Uh, put that in the calculator. I think you should get something that's around uh, 3.87, again, measured in centimeters. All right, so I think now we're in a position where we can calculate the total electrical potential. So the way that I calculate V total is just simply K, uh, Q1 over uh, the distance over here. I'm gonna call that, say, R1 for now. Just Let's just write down a general equation and we'll substitute in all our values. Uh, Q2 will be this one. And uh, Q3, I'll call this last one over here. So I have three uh, contributions over here, right? R2 plus K, Q3, R3. All right, now we're going to use some of these variables here that I've introduced. I can factor out that constant K because it's the same for all three. All right, the value of Q1 is simply Q. Right? I'll just put it in as Q. Uh, the distance now is going to be this distance A that I just solved for. All right, what else? Plus, what's the second charge? The second charge here has a magnitude of minus Q. You have to put the sign here when you calculate potential because it's a scalar quantity. The distance to the point is also B, that one centimeter value. Plus, what's the last one? The last one here is also minus Q. And again, it's also a distance of B away. All right, so guess what? You can combine both of these last two terms to make your life a little bit easier. All right, so what do you get? Q over A, and then what? Minus 2Q over B. All right, I kind of like to do this. Uh, I'll substitute the numbers at the very last step. I'll also take out the value Q, and I'll bring that to the front. So we have K, Q, just so that way it simplifies some of the numbers that I have to substitute in here. Minus 2 over B. Okay, so that's the value, or that's the expression for V total. And now I'm just going to substitute everything into the calculator. So for K, I have 9 times 10 to the 9. Uh, what else? Q was my 7.5. Now it's in microcoulomb. So that's 10 to the minus 6. All right, so now we have to substitute our numbers. It's 1 divided by A. A was 3.87 centimeters, but again, I want to convert that to meters. Okay, and then minus 2 over B. B was 1 centimeter, 0 0.01. 
All right, if you put everything in the calculator and you're careful with all of these exponents, I think I had something like minus 11.76 if I round, multiply times 10 to the 6 volts. And you can convert that to megavolts if you want, but that's a lot of voltage, right? Okay, and that's the value for the electrical potential at point P. All right, second question says, calculate the electrical potential energy now of this entire system. All right, so to calculate the total potential energy, what you have to do is you have to consider all the pairs. Okay, so this is what it would look like. So we have actually... I'm going to call this right u12 that's the interaction between q1 and q2 plus the potential energy now between the charge 1 and 3 call that 1 3 and plus the potential energy now between the blue charges we're going to call that 2 3 oops all right now for each pair we can substitute the equation it looks similar to the potential but keep in mind there's two charges here right q1 Q2 divided by the distance between 1 and 2 plus K, Q1, Q3 divided by the distance between 1 and 3. And the last one, K, Q2 rather, Q3 divided by the distance now, 2, 3. All right, now when we're, again, this is a scalar quantity, so when you substitute the charges here, it's very important to put positives and negatives if the charges are positives or negatives. All right, now let's go ahead and substitute. Uh, we can, again, factor out the K constant. That's common within each one. Let's look at the interaction between 1 and 2. So we've got our first charge, which is going to be positive Q, and our second charge, which is minus Q. All right, these are multiplied by each other. Divided by the distance. That distance here is this 4 centimeters. Well, let me just go 0 0.04 right away plus the interaction now between q1 and q3 that's this one and that one so again you get uh, positive q multiplied by minus q and the same distance divided by 0 0.04 so those first two terms are the same now we have the last one which is q2 q3 uh, q2 has a value of minus q and q3 has a value of minus q and now all that gets divided by our two centimeters. Okay, now let's just take care of some of these positives and negative signs here. So the first one is minus Q squared over 0 0.04. And look at, there's two of those terms. Actually, let me give myself a little bit more space. And I'm going to put minus two. I'm going to combine both of those terms into one. Now this last term over here, it becomes a positive, right? You multiply both of those negative charges, you're going to get Q squared over 0 0.02. All right, my last little bit of algebra here, I'm just going to factor out the Q squared before I substitute the numbers. And I get minus 2 over 0 0.04 and plus 1 over 0 0.02. Now, this might not look obvious to you, but this guy right here, it just so happens for these three charges, and this is just a coincidence because of the values of the distance and uh, everything else that I picked, um, that this here actually will cancel out and give to zero because the first term's negative and it's positive over here. So actually for this system right here, the total potential energy is zero joules. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Potential energy can be a positive, can be a negative value of a system. It could also be zero. All right, problem two says find the electrical potential energy. Okay, just similar to what we just did uh, for this charge configuration. So I've got three charges here, a 20 nanocoulomb, 10 nanocoulomb, and a minus 20 nanocoulomb. I've labeled them Q1, Q2, and Q3, and you're given these distances here between the charges. So... Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the potential energy. We need to know the potential energy between every pair. So we're going to need the potential energy between 1, 2, between 2 and 3, and also between 1 and 3. Okay, uh, next step, use the equation for the potential energy between two charges. So here you'd have K, Q1, Q2 divided by the distance between those two charges plus K, Q2, Q3, divided by that distance, and the last one, K, Q1, Q3, divided by that distance. Okay, uh, next step, start substituting our numbers. 
All right, so our k value, again, I'm going to factor it out, all right? So it's 9 times 10 to the 9. All right, we're going to open up a big bracket. And what I'm left with here are these charges over the distances for the three terms. So Q1 is 20 nanocoulombs, so it's 20 times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, Q2 was 10 nanocoulombs, 10 times 10 to the minus 9. Again, you have to put the sign into uh, all of these equations. Now, R12, that's this distance here. That's this 4 centimeter distance. 0 0.04 plus uh, Q2, Q3. Uh, Q2, Q3, we have a 10 and we have a minus 20. Right, so we have a 10, then a minus 20 nanocoulomb. Now, that distance here between 2 and 3 is also 4 centimeters. Now, I'm running out of space here. I'm going to have to squeeze this in a little bit. And the last one is between 1 and 3. So that's this far distance here, right? So you have to be a little bit careful. 1 and 3 is here. So when we substitute, that's a 20 and a minus 20. Oh, that makes it easier. So actually, we're going to get... Um, so let's just do 20 nanocoulomb and then a minus 20 nanocoulomb and all of this now divided by now it's eight centimeters between them so be a little bit careful 0 0.08 all right and then you got to close that final bracket all right if i put everything in the calculator i'm very careful uh, what i got here was minus 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5 all right potential energy is measured in joules and that is our answer for part a all right let's go look at part b now okay all right, we have now a fourth charge, which has a magnitude of 40 nanocoulomb. It's going to be released from rest. We want to know its speed when it's really, really far away. Now, we're going to use conservation of energy for this, okay? And we're going to consider the total energy of the system here and set it equal to the total uh, energy in the final position. So this is what we have, all right? We're going to have... Um, the energy of the three charge system, I'm just going to call that mu zero. That's the number we just calculated. Plus the potential energy of the new charge Q4 that we just added here. Okay. Now, plus the initial kinetic energy of the system. So this is the total energy initially. Okay. This is the number we just calculated from part A. And this is the new potential energy now because this guy interacts with the three charges. Now, that has to be equal to the total energy in the final position. Now, in the final position, I still have my three charges here. So I still have this U0. This doesn't change, okay? So a lot of times, you don't even include it in this part of the calculation, right? This is the number part A that we just did. Now, what else are we going to have? Well, we're going to have the uh, final potential energy of Q4. Call it Q4 final. And then plus the final kinetic energy, okay, Kf. And it's only Q4 that is moving. The other three charges are assumed to be fixed. Now, since we have this constant term on both sides of the equation, we basically just cancel that out. So we're not really interested in the number we calculated in part A. It doesn't affect anything to do with Q4 because the charges are fixed. So that's just a constant value. So this is what we're left with here. We're only looking at the energy associated to that charge Q4. Let me move that over. Now, we did release the charge from rest, so that simplifies this term. There's no initial kinetic energy. And now there's also another simplification because they tell us that we're very far away, very large distances. And what that means is that the value R goes to infinity, basically. And if R goes to infinity, it basically means that the interaction of Q4 with any of the three other charges, there's basically zero potential energy between them because you'd be dividing by infinity. So we get to eliminate this term when we're very far away. All right, the final kinetic energy, that's pretty straightforward. That's just one half mv squared. So that is where the speed comes in. So all we are left to do now is we need to calculate what is the initial potential energy of this charge in the vicinity of these three other charges. Well, that we know how to do, right? And I'm going to do it a slightly different way. Now, I'm going to use that the potential energy of any charge, you can write as the value of that charge multiplied by the voltage at the position where that charge is located. This is the point P. 
All right, so we're first gonna calculate what is this electrical potential at this position? And it's the potential produced by the three other charges. Let me factor out that value, okay? Um, Q1 over R1, Q2 over R2, plus Q3 over R3. Now we're gonna need to know the distance between each charge and this point where that charge is located. So if you look at this, we have a triangle over here. This is three centimeters, that's four centimeters. You use Pythagorean theorem, that's five centimeters. All right, now we can start substituting the values in here, right? So we're gonna have nine times 10 to the nine. Uh, multiplied, Q1 was 20 nanocoulombs, 10 to the minus nine. Divided by the distance now, it's 0 0.05, five centimeters from that point to where this charge is located. Uh, plus Q2 is 10 times 10 to the minus nine, divided by three in this case, right? Okay, and the last one is a negative charge. It's minus 20 times 10 to the minus nine. And again, it's also over five. All right, put, and again, those will ca cancel out. Uh, put that in the calculator. You should get that the electrical potential at this point right here is 3,000 volts. All right, 3,000 joules per coulomb. So that means if you go ahead and you place a charge Q4 at that position, the amount of energy that the system has, or that Q4 has, right? The uh, electrical potential energy of Q4 is the value of the charge multiplied by 3,000. Put that in the calculator, you should get 1.2 times 10 to the uh, minus four joules. All right, great. So now we know the value of the initial potential energy of only that charge, Q4. Um, now we go back to our conservation of energy statement. Right, so we have initial potential energy of Q4. All of that will get converted into kinetic energy of Q4. Now, just do a little bit of algebra to isolate for the speed. You bring the two on the other side. You get two times that potential energy. We have to get rid of the mass. You divide by the mass. And then you have to take the square root of everything. That gives me the speed. Just substitute the numbers in here. 2 multiplied by the number we just calculated, 10 to the minus 4. All of this divided by the mass of that charge. That's up here, 2 times 10 to the minus 13. That's already in kilograms. At the end, put things in the calculator. You should get 3.46 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. All right, so there's a nice kind of problem that uses um, conservation of uh, energy in order to find the speed of a charged particle when it's far away.